Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Perspective. The Indian war hysteria continues. They continue to make unreasonable statements, inflammatory statements. We have remained firm from the very beginning. We have talked about independent inquiry. We have talked about uh, defending ourselves. But we are very firm on the fact that we will retaliate if needed. But that ra 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 rational uh, attitude should prevail between the two nations, both nuclear powers. We'll be talking about that. We'll also be talking about the threat of blocking our water, which is nothing new but uh, the fact that Pakistan reserves the right to retaliate. I have with me Lieutenant General Raza Mohammed Khan, who's a defense analyst. Thank you for joining us today. Chaudhary Nayatullah, who's consultant UNDP. Thank you for joining us today. And Dr. Mansoor Akbar Kundi, foreign affairs expert. Gee, General Sahib, like I said, you know, we are very firm. Our stance has remained the same, very reasonable. We, of course, reserve the right to defend ourselves, and we are fully capable of doing that, which is what our Prime Minister said, followed by our, the Army. That is exactly what we've been saying. But the kind of unreasonableness and the kind of hysterical, uh, you know, attitude that is coming from across the border, what are, what are the alternatives left as far as we are concerned now? Okay, uh, Bismillah rahman rahim uh, I think uh, today, whatever you heard from the DGISPR, uh, he was uh, actually uh, reinforcing uh, all the decisions and directions of the National Security Committee, right. uh, which was held uh, yesterday. Uh, and uh, he elaborated a number of things. Uh, I think one thing was made very clear, and that was uh, that uh, uh, our defenses uh, uh, are now against any external aggression are impregnable right. and therefore uh, you know uh, if any adventure uh, is tried by India or any other enemy of Pakistan uh, they actually will get a surprise from us and we will give them a, a very befitting reply right. uh, and probably you know the, the, the cost uh, will be uh, so heavy that uh, they uh, will not be able to bear it. So that was the kind of message uh, which was communicated and it was also stated that if they have any actionable intelligence that they need to share with us. They could actually, I'll add to that, that uh, they could uh, also share that with the United Nations Military Observers Group right. uh, who are stationed there in Srinagar. But unfortunately Indians have kept them under, uh, literally under house arrest and they are not allowed to come either to the line of control or to such areas, you know, where incidents happened uh, to come and help uh, in uh, joint interrogations of, uh, of uh, uh, these incidents. They are actually supposed to report directly to the United Nations Secretary General, but that is not happening. Uh, two other things are important, you know, in this context. But this kind of hysterical attitude that's coming, you know, this kind of the statements that are coming, the inflammatory statements that are, you yes. know, there's no investigation, there's no proof, we're not being given, like I said, you know, yes. like you said, like the yes. Prime Minister said, like the Army is saying, yes. share with us yes. any, uh, you know, actionable any, intelligence. any actionable yes. intelligence, which hasn't happened because there, there doesn't seem to be any. Yes, yeah. there, there, there is none. And then, you know, this is the easiest thing to do. Uh, this is India's default mode, uh, actually, to immediately blame their own security failures uh, on Pakistan. Right. Uh, they should actually carry out their own security audit. You recall that, uh, you know, this used to happen sometimes back in Afghanistan as well. Right. Whatever used to happen, they would first immediately blame Pakistan right. exactly. and later on do the investigation or interrogation. So the same thing is happening. In this case, the National uh, Investigation Agency of India, they had not even arrived, you know, in, in, uh, in Jammu when they, uh, they jumped to the conclusion and said that uh, Pakistan is involved in this. So this is ridiculous and I think uh, this is not going to uh, serve any purpose. Uh, I think saner elements in India, they have understood this. Do you think that there are, I mean, I, I don't want to go, I mean, I don't want to be as extremist, of course, as... India is being as threatening and as inflammatory, but do you think that the kind of government there is with the elections around the corner, there are saner elements which will speak at this point? Yes. Uh, I, I would actually name one person and she is Arun Dathi Roy. Right. Uh, I think uh, two days back or three days back she gave uh, an interview to Al Jazeera and the questioner, uh, you know, said, uh, asked her if uh, Kashmir uh, should be liberated because the people of Kashmir are, asked li are asking for liberation from India. Right. But she said, 
yes that that may be a true or or not true and that may happen or may not happen but actually it is now india which should get independence from the issue of kashmir right if if you recall you know in the past people used to blame pakistan for its india centric policies that is not the case it the opposite has happened now right and uh, all indian policies are now pakistan centric and within that they are all kashmir centric because they have nothing else to offer to the people of india uh, you know if when if they have to talk about uh, uh, development then they have not done much of development and, there and especially with the modi government with the elections around the corner a lot of it is that isn't it the it hyperbole that is being yeah, created exactly it is directly related to the elections which are going to happen in april may right and the modi uh, government has actually communicated to all their lower ranking politicians that they sell this to the sell people this if story, you can this, their narrative right. and tell them that pakistan is responsible for that because right. This this is actually an election issue, and they won the the uh, previous election, election because of this, right. and they want to re to get re-elected uh, on this. Right, we'll talk more about this. I want yeah. to go to Chaudhary Naithullah, who is a consultant with UNDP. What's this new threat uh, about? Not new, because you know we've been hearing it off and on. It's. Do you think that you know India will do it? Do you think that they yeah. are you know what what is the position exactly? Where where are we as far as uh, you know our water situation is concerned? Yeah. Well, I think uh, uh, this is a very uh, ridiculous statement and very irresponsible statement uh, you know given by India, and uh, by giving such a statement, India is by itself uh, you know confusing and deceiving its own people, uh, because. Uh, uh, water in uh, our eastern rivers, for example, Bias and Ravi and Satluj, that is already uh, you know stopped by India. There right. are several dams over there. They what have diverted the waters. Do? What more they can do? Right. Now, what are they, what the amount of water which is coming to Pakistan in these rivers, particularly in Ravi, uh, that is uh, the water which is coming after the uh, dams and the uh, their uh, water headworks. You know, that is the rainfall water. You know, which is coming to Pakistan, and also the seepage water. Now the gradient uh, of water uh, is towards our side, so nothing can be done. You know, uh, we, uh, so I, I think uh, it, it is a uh, it is just a political slogan. It's just slogan. an empty threat that they're trying to make to yeah, satisfy yeah. their people again. You yeah. know, because of the situation there, because they have nothing else to do. Nothing. Nothing else, else to say to them. Nothing exactly. else to sell to them. That is, it's more of the same. That's what exactly. you're saying. Exactly. That's what they. Are, they I, I, in my opinion, they are deceiving their own people. The other thing is. That you know, even on the our uh, you know uh, rivers uh, like Chenab, Jhelum, and Indus, what the kind of dams they are thinking and they are planning to do, right. how how they can you know store all this kind of water, uh, huge heavy amount of water, which is uh, more than uh, uh, you know uh, uh, very heavy amount of water in uh, in Kashmir. They are going to flood the entire Kashmir or Jammu. It is not possible, possible you know. Right. It is not possible. So this is just a political slogan, which is uh, you know they are trying to get the advantage. Political the advantage. minister has talked of 20 percent of their own water. Actually, yeah. if you read the the tweet, it says that some of it uh, they could not utilize, and now they will utilize it, and uh, they will actually divert it to Punjab and. Uh, to Kashmir, so it, it's more of a political statement in my yeah. view. You know. it, it, is, uh, it is just like, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I searched search through the internet and uh, what 95% uh, water of these rivers is already utilized by India and whatever is coming is the overflow. Right. Uh, and they cannot so do they with can't that. do anything about the, the overflow. That, yeah. Anyway, I'll come back to you. Dr. Mansoor Akbar Saab, you know, as, as far as these threats are concerned, as far as talking without proof is concerned, this is not the first time. Do you think that India will get away with it? You know, I, I always mention that, that in, unfortunately, India and Pakistan have got non-endurable bilateralism. Right. It's not first. And the blame game, mostly from India, has been going on for almost decades. But what happened on 14, and in repercussion or retaliation, whatever, India has cross uh, previous limits and it reflects very negative on its role as a nation state in international uh, law okay. like threatening we stop the water Yazid like that number two though it's no more non-aligned in pure sense but it's against 
its principles of foreign policy that India is a non-aligned here, threatening that we will uh, we, that we will retaliate. And third, unfortunately, election ahead, Moody right. not very certain of it sweeping. It faces challenges right. in many states. Right. So that's linked with that. Before coming here, when driving here to the station, I was thinking, um, very unfortunate, twice in Balochistan, including big blast in police academy training, killed more than 44 people. Pakistan didn't go that revengeful, right. although many corners uh, loudly claim that India is involved, and India is actively involved in Balochistan. And Kulbushan Yadav is a case yeah. in point. So, I mean, that's not very long open, ago. Open, open. Right. Even the, the, the blind, biased people said that he was caught red-handed. Right, right. And, and it was highlighted that day in, during the trial that everybody was watching that Indian lawyer was more defensive, more faceless, because when they pointed out Right. that what he was doing there. So answering your question, I believe India won't do it. Pakistan has got uh, uh, nuclear uh, 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 capability. Right, and there are irresponsible. And it's not that easy. And, and one thing more, even uh, Indian really press, really many concerned. corners in Indian press, including the justice, he mentioned that it will be very very sad on Indian part if it does it. It will cause retaliation from Pakistan and it will do it. And as our Prime Minister mentioned, he's right, I agree with him. No matter whatever differences one have with the government, our government since its step into power has been more more friendly towards, right, there is, there towards is, India. Right, I want to talk about that. I'll come back to you. Do you General sir? He's very right when Mansoor Akbar Saab says that, you know, there is a conciliatory attitude every, you know, from the point go as far as the new government is concerned. Since the Prime Minister Imran Khan has come and he's been very conciliatory, he's extended himself, he's tried to, you know, maybe approach, not approach India, but, you know, try to, to form the kind of relationship that perhaps will lead to good bilateral relations between the two countries. You know, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the Qatarpur corridor yeah. itself, you know, that's a huge initiative yes. that we've taken, uh, yes. Pakistan has done. But, you know, this kind of a reaction from India puts us back in, you know, we obviously the, the armies also said that we will retaliate if needed and we're fully capable of doing that. Yes. But how, what about our bilateral relations? What kind of a future? Because, you know, like uh, Inayatullah Sahib has said, unfortunately, the way we are placed, they are our neighbors, and that's a reality for us. Yes, they are our, our neighbors, and I think uh, we have uh, this, the new government, as soon as it was formed, you know, uh, it extended that olive branch to them, right. but they totally rejected it. In fact, they were very contemptuous uh, of these overtures from our side. And uh, some people even blame the government of appeasement, uh, which is not so, uh, because trade between in India and Pakistan uh, could actually benefit both countries. Our rationality is actually, I think, viewed by them as a weakness. As a weakness, that is right. And look at what they've done now, you know, that they've uh, imposed 200% uh, sort of duties uh, on uh, your import, right. which is going to hurt them more than it could hurt Pakistan. Uh, because our total trade volume is about uh, two billion dollars or so. Uh, out of that, uh, I think uh, we export only about two to three hundred million dollars worth uh, uh, stuff to India, and the rest is uh, their things coming to Pakistan. So they're going to get Lose more hurt. Right. In addition to that, they transit trade to Afghanistan, uh, whether it is through the, uh, the sea route or through the air route, uh, that is going to be severely curtailed. Let me tell you. Because uh, I think our government is, is also contemplating uh, on responding uh, to that issue. Two other things I'd like to point out. Uh, one is uh, regarding this uh, Central Reserve Police Force of India. They are actually known as the encounter specialists. Uh, they, they, there are about 70,000 uh, such forces uh, uh, in Kashmir alone. And they have dozens and dozens of uh, you know, check posts uh, where they uh, actually uh, perpetrate barbarities over the Kashmiris. And that is, they are the ones who are uh, actually having these pellet guns. 
and they are directly responsible for uh, blinding over 2,000 people and severely injuring 6,300 people. So you saw, you know, the reaction from the Kashmiris who right. went uh, against them and uh, the Pulwama incident uh, happened. Uh, the other thing is, uh, uh, you know, now... But do you think that's part of, of the reaction? I mean, because they are seeing this, the, the kind of reaction they are seeing from the Kashmiris, Kashmiris. you know, the way it's building up. Yeah. The this way is what that, I said. That's the, this that's is a reaction. The, right. So This so is a reaction from the Kashmiris, you know, to their... But, but that which, reaction which itself They is, are ignoring this, right. you know, this factor they are ignoring. Yeah. They even don't want to mention single word about that, that it happened in the midst of Kashmir, where which is densely military deployed and where resistance going on and uh, and it it can happen in any part of the world where such such atrocities going on and such there there can be retaliation i agree i right. agree and can i complete this argument i'll, I'll come back to you we've yeah. also been joined by khurshid yeah, okay. mehmood kasuri sahab who's a former uh, foreign minister thank you for joining us uh, kasuri sahab how do you see the situation as far as India is concerned? Clearly, we have demonstrated to them that we are going to respond. We are fully capable of responding. But that, you know, that rational attitude should prevail between the two countries. But this is not the first time that India has turned around and blamed Pakistan. The and Pakistan has first said that it would like to resolve it fully. It would want an investigation conducted. But if India is not prepared, then Pakistan has made it quite clear that uh, it will not be browbeaten. And in fact, uh, the, uh, if you look at the reaction of various countries, India continues to say that 50 or 60 countries are supporting. What are, what are they supporting? What they are saying is that they condemn the attack in Pulwama. The Foreign Office of Pakistan has said that. In, as far as international support is concerned, even the Security Council, Pakistan was not named despite efforts by India. Reasons are quite clear. That the, recently, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees brought out a report which catalogued the human rights violations that are being con uh, inflicted upon the hapless people of Kashmir. So as far as the international pre uh, situation is concerned, I don't think India has succeeded in mobilizing opinion against Pakistan as it had claimed repeatedly and is telling its people that it has isolated Pakistan. Nothing of the sort has happened. But Pakistan, of course, like any sovereign country, there is it wants a peaceful resolution, and it has offered that, the prime minister has offered that, then the, then the Cabinet Committee on Security has offered that, serves the right to defend itself. And uh, I think India must get a clear message as far as it is concerned. Right, but do you think the kind of response that is coming from India, it's certainly very irresponsible. It's not the first time. Kulbushan Yadav is a case in point. Whereas India has nothing that they're basing these allegations on without proof. And the Prime Minister said that, you know, if there is any proof, please share it with us. Share actionable intelligence with us. This reaction, do you think it's part of the fact that, you know, there is elections around the corner, like we talked about, that Modi is trying to sell this to the people? Do you think part of this war hysteria is created because of this? Well, absolutely no doubt about it. That part of it, or a large part of it, in fact, the situation that uh, has fueled Kashmir uh, uprising even more is the attitude of the BJP towards Muslims generally. The BJP has, for purposes of this election, tried to polarize public opinion in India along Hindu-Muslim lines and Pakistan against India. And that, that link that to the lynching of Muslims on like, for allegedly eating cow meat and you, you, everything falls in place. So this is not something that's happened recently. There's a reaction to that in Kashmir, because Kashmir is uh, major, overwhelmingly Muslim. So, uh, and then the human rights violations in Kashmir not started recently. They've been on since 1997. That is 22 years. And uh, India wishes to turn attention away of the international community 
from gross violation of human rights and would like to believe, would like the world to believe that Pakistan is doing all this, whereas now there's no doubt that uh, overwhelmingly it is the Indians themselves, the Kashmiris themselves, who are carrying on the struggle. But, but they can't sell this to the world anymore, can they? I mean, like you said, the kind of reaction that's coming from most of the people, most of the countries, is that, you know, they, they actually can see the reality for what it is. The kind of propaganda that is coming from India, it's clear now. Isn't that true? It's true, but we'll have to do much more. And we'll also have to put our own house win. in order. And I'm glad that uh, the government and the Pakistan army are aware of it. They've already taken the first steps in North Waziristan. And uh, the statements coming out of the Cabinet Committee on Security are very timely, will deprive India of whatever ammunition it has left against Pakistan. It tries to mislead international opinion by referring to actions in the past when admittedly certain actions did take place in Afghanistan, but that was fully in connivance with the United States of America. And the uh, U.S. Uh, was, uh, in fact, if you have to talk of one country, which uh, created uh, extremism, which helped extremism, it's not just in Afghanistan, in many other countries of the world. Pakistan was, yes, a casualty, and Pakistan has paid the price, and it's got 70,000 dead. And then the uh, Pakistan army, by rendering, uh, I think, 7,000 martyrs, they liberated North Waziristan, which is uh, known as the capital of uh, uh, the terrorists all over the world. What more can Pakistan do? And also towards um, other ag uh, agencies or, or, uh, or organizations which are non-state actors, uh, you know, the lashkar e tayyaba and the jaish e Muhammad government has taken very concrete actions. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Kasuri. Thank you for being with us. G, uh, General Saab, put our own house in order. What more do you think we can do at, at our end to maybe tell the world, you know, of course the world knows, but we need the kind of reaction we need from the world. What do we do? I think uh, we have already done a lot. Uh, and uh, it is others who need to do more. And I'll give you specific examples. Okay. In India, you know, you have the various branches of the RSS. And uh, one is the VHP and the other is the Bajrang Dal. Uh, they are both terrorist organizations. They were declared terrorists uh, uh, in uh, 1948 uh, because they killed Mahatma Gandhi. They're the ones. The RSS killed Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, and later on, when uh, Indra Gandhi was in power, for three or four years, they declared these organizations as terrorist organizations. Unfortunately, right now, the BJP and uh, Mr. Modi himself and the Indian government they are, they are actually uh, now an extension of the RSS itself. That is the real problem. And the world actually needs to understand that they need to be banned in India by the United Nations, by the United States and all others yes. who are actually telling us to ban uh, this party or that party. We on our uh, side are doing whatever is possible under the National Action Plan. Uh, I think uh, there are many proscribed organizations you, you mentioned of the LET, and you uh, made a mention of the uh, JEM, they are proscribed organizations. Right. And uh, although there are no proofs against them, not even an iota of proof with the United States, with the UN, or with India, yet, uh, you know, because the United Nations proscribed them, so we had to proscribe them too. So uh, that is uh, important to know. The other thing is that, look, you know, I think previously we made a mention of the Indian surgical strikes. I think we had a number of reasons actually to undertake surgical strikes On against own. India. Right. Because whatever Kalboshan Yadav has said, whatever he has been doing against the CPEC, whatever he has done uh, in Balochistan, whatever India has done against the Chinese consulate in Karachi, what it's been doing, uh, Kasuri Sahib made a mention, you know, of terrorists in North Waziristan, they were all sponsored by India. Most of them were sponsored by India. They were armed by them. They were actually facilitated by them. So we actually, uh, we, we flushed them out from there. And we are continuing to implement the National Action Plan to the best of our abilities, despite our meager resources. We are doing that. 
and I think the world needs to come and help and assist us, you know, because uh, we need money for that. We have this fence made in Afghanistan and we, are, we have now proposed to Iran as well that okay. we need to actually fence that border so that, uh, you know, no terrorists can go from this side and no terrorists can come from that side. Uh, India has multiple layers of fencing, you know, on Kashmir. They, that, that fence is actually patrolled 24 hours and they have drones flying on top of that. Uh, it is observed through the satellite. It's impossible for anyone actually to come uh, from, uh, from uh, our side to their side. Okay. Yet they are blaming us, uh, you know, for infiltration. So, so it is actually ridiculous. I think we've come to a point where anything happens in India, they yes. blindly, yes. you know, blame between yeah. Pakistan and the and world. Uh, and as General Sahib mentioned, right. somebody was telling me, I myself visited this uh, Norawal Kartarpur area. They have got technology from Israel yeah. and they, they're more sensitive. Something hits them, bell starts ringing on the border. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, they are more sensitive and blaming us, uh, our, we have not secured our border that much as they have. Right. And one thing more that this whole border is fenced. It so, is fenced and electrified. Uh, no, <laughs> there is electricity. Electrified and they have got a one device. Yeah. Sometimes an animal, uh, when it hits yeah. that, starts ringing and yeah. flashing. There's something new but, technology. But, but the question for us now is that, you know, as far as you know, General Saab is concerned, that we have done enough. I think we can come, come to that conclusion as far as Pakistan is concerned. We've, we've always extended ourselves. Like I said, you know, the, this government, when the Prime Minister came, you know, we've always, through our successive governments, we have extended ourselves. We've tried to, to reach, you know, a kind of a working relationship with a neighbor from across the border. But that is impossible when we get this kind of reaction again and this again. This kind of reaction, you know, you know Pakistan, uh, unfortunately, again, uh, sort of blame game. If something happens, international pressure right. from America, India is included that, but mostly from America, do more, right. do more. They're like Pakistan is behind all these conspiracies or these actions or whatever you call it. But they don't even, they, India should be told, you do more, at least improve human rights violation. Like General Saab mentioned, pallets, uh, guns, right. they are prohibited. If you read Gorilla Wall Fair right. by Che Guevara or all other leading uh, books on warfare, pallet guns are prohibited. And even in our tribal rivalry, when they kill each other and they exchange of firing, Pellet guns not used. But they are using it in Kashmir right, against but, innocent people. Which is a children. known fact, but we don't see the kind of reaction from the world that we should be seeing. That's we the should problem. highlight it. We should highlight it, and it's highlighted. This uh, Kalbushan case when going on in Hague, right. many things indirectly and directly highlighted. Right. So you that think India that is itself a terrorist state, and India is <coughs> mm, uh, trying its best to muddy water in Pakistan through different circles. Right, like, and, and you know, like Anayatullah Saab is saying, as far as even the water threat is concerned, it's an mm. empty threat. It's just, you know, it, it, what is it? It's, is it playing to the galleries again? It is just you know, to satisfy their own people, right? Yeah, well, you see, the, the thing is, uh, you know, uh, I was surfing at the internet uh, just uh, before coming to this show, and I was really pleased that uh, there are so many uh, thousands and uh, hundreds and thousands of Indians who really, uh, you know, uh, uh, regretted on this particular statement. They say that this, this is an inhumanitarian act and it will uh, lead India to so many other problems because India is sharing water with Nepal and Bangladesh. They will also lose their, uh, lose their uh, in, uh, confidence on India. Okay. And also, whatever India is doing this, this way, it is uh, giving an example for Chinese to build more dams on Brahmaputra in uh, Tibet. So uh, it is it, it is going to backfire on India anyway. Right. And the other thing is that uh, you know uh, very very important point which General Sa was uh, mentioning before on the trade side. You know uh, you see uh, we have been threatened uh, and rather uh, it is in the media that uh, the trade of tomato and uh, other things uh, vegetables have been stopped uh, towards Pakistan. I would say, I would say this is a blessing for Pakistan. It's a blessing for Pakistan because it happened in uh, 2018. 
and our farmers of Swat area and all the Swabi, Mardan Swat area, they were so extremely happy. And there were reports that uh, they were saying that they had uh, been able to clear their debts which were lying on them for the last five years because, uh, you know, Indian market, uh, India is providing so much of subsidy on fertilizer, water, right. and so many things, and their, uh, their market, market price is much cheaper than Pakistan. So it gave, uh, gave uh, an opportunity for us, uh, for our farmers from uh, Balochistan and uh, KP to provide the goods, provide these, uh, these things, vegetables to uh, Punjab and Karachi as well. So it is a blessing. We have been, we as agriculture experts, and we like have- And like General Saab is saying, they yeah. will lose out more, uh, they, they, they are the losers. In, in fact, they are the losers. And, uh, you know, uh, it is just a, uh, you know, uh, political slogan which they have, uh, you know, uh, given to their people that we will do this and this. But they can't do it really on reality. Uh, I mean, uh, they know very well that, uh, you know, we are also equally prepared and right. we are more prepared than that. Because and, and, and even these slogans, uh, these slogans you can interrelate with the uh, coming election. You know, many th things the right, Moody, right. Moody government is doing, they, they, they fall below accepted standard of diplomacy. You know, diplomacy, <coughs> even if you oppose a country, there are certain norms there. Now, like uh, saying that we will stop tomatoes uh, export to that country and we stop the water. For example, you say we stop water. It's under international agreement, part of international law. Treaties are major source of international law. So if you violate a treaty, it means you are violating the rudimentary principles of international law. And one thing more I also tell you that if you, I mean, I'm a, uh, being a professor of international relation, theoretically, if you define nation statehood, Pakistan and India don't have good relation, but Pakistan has never gone to that extent against right, exactly. the nation statehood of India. They have, not now, even <coughs> before. Like what they're doing now looks that they don't, uh, cannot tolerate the nation statehood of Pakistan. Right. Pakistan is a nation state, a strong country, and it will grow more stronger, has got a uh, strong uh, uh, army. Right. Right. It, is in it is in yes. position to retaliate. Right. You know, you, you yes. are talking of uh, the policies of the Western countries and the United States in particular. Let me add that there is a direct relationship of uh, peace with, between India and Pakistan with peace in Afghanistan. Uh, you know, most of uh, our uh, uh, attention in terms of surveillance, intelligence, troop deployment uh, has been now on the Western Front. And uh, you therefore saw a modicum of stability uh, there and they were involved, you know, in North and South Waziristan and Fatah and Swat and elsewhere. But when this kind of incident happens, then obviously it shifts our attention from the western borders to our eastern front. Yeah. Right. And therefore, instability in Afghanistan increases. Therefore, I say that it is in the interest of the West and the United States, because the West has 37 countries are there. They are stuck up in Afghanistan for the last 18 years. Uh, if Pakistan had a free hand, if there was no threat on our eastern borders, probably you know we could have actually spared more resources for the protection of the western borders and for ensuring peace in, uh, in Afghanistan, but that was not possible. And these kinds of incidents makes it much more difficult for us, first point. But the kind of reaction that we are looking, again, I, I want to, you know, that kind of reaction, that kind of sanity, it's not coming, that voice of sanity is not coming from, from the West. So I would say, you know, that this is their short-sightedness. And in that, uh, I think uh, the United Nations, uh, our embassies abroad, the Pakistani diaspora, and we have a very large diaspora, the Kashmiri diaspora. Perhaps when, when Mr. Kasuri talks about, you know, clearing our own house, putting our own house in order, perhaps he means that we need to extend ourselves to that, that kind of Western, to the Western audience, so that they can actually, you know, take notice of what's happening. Actually, as far as that what's is required. Let me, let me say, you know, I've stayed for quite some time in the United States, and let me uh, tell you that, uh, you know, the, the U.S. politicians, and I'm particularly talking of uh, senators and congressmen, I think they need to be invited <coughs> to come and, uh, you know, have people to people, politician to politician contact, and they should come and probably stay for a number of days 
and see what we are doing, you know, to curb terrorism right. uh, and uh, other things. Also, uh, you know, uh, let me very clearly say uh, that uh, right now the United Nations uh, is very dormant, you know. It is their primary responsibility. There are United Nations resolutions, a number of them uh, on Kashmir. That India has clearly flouted. They've, they've yeah. flouted and right. they're looking, you know, to now have a permanent seat. How is that possible? Pakistan still has an option, you know, to take this issue back to the United Nations because Indians are saying that they have the instrument uh, of accession with them. Uh, this is a lie. So far, they do not have any authenticated, genuine, original document uh, which uh, can be, you know, given Presented to the United as, Nations. As, as evidence. As, okay. as evidence, okay. Yeah. And, and secondly, they were the ones, you know, who took the Kashmir issue to the United Nations. So, these are some facts and figures which Pakistan can take back to the United Nations. India is saying that we took the case there under Chapter 6 of the United Nations, which is mainly related to mediation uh, uh, and nothing more than that. But Pakistan can make an effort to take it back to the Security Council under Chapter 7, which is the mandatory sort of a thing for plebiscite. And if that doesn't happen, then at least it can take it back to the General Assembly. Right. Because in the case of Palestine and uh, other places, you know, the General Assembly is there. There is no veto there. So it can be taken to the, to the General Assembly. What about all these irresponsible statements as far as our nuclear power is concerned? You know, we've, we've said, you know, the DJISPR has also said that, you know, we're a, we're a nuclear nation. Everyone knows that. And we need to exercise some responsibility there as far as India is concerned when issuing these statements. You know, I agree with you. And it's unfortunate. India being a nation state, a diplomatic power, I mean, is a leading democracy. But whatever it's showing here is very revengeful, below accepted diplomatic norms. Right. And uh, sad to say like that, even it's mean of the government. It is it's like a cheap thing of the government doing it. Yeah. But Again, many circles, including myself, they say that it's greatly related <coughs> to coming election. And one thing yeah. more, more, it's happening at the time when hopes of peace are rising in Afghanistan. And America... And like General uh, Sub said, when this sort of thing happens, then, of course, the situation in Afghanistan also destabilizes. And destabilize. Right. And they say, you know, Pakistan playing a very active and positive role in right. bringing peace to Afghanistan. And America needs that. And one thing more, like General Sub mentioned, international media and missions, uh, mission people be brought here and they, sh they should be shown what Pakistan is doing. Honestly, I come from that area. Right. Now you go there during the last one and a half year, they have fenced all border. Mm. So what else we can do more? And then simultaneously, they be taken to that occupied uh, side of Kashmir and shown that what India is doing there. I mean, you know, the, the U.S. government is still shut because yeah. they have not been given the money for fencing their border with Mexico. Yeah. Okay, and we have done it with our own resources. So, <laughs> actually, they should I be mean, patting us. That's the prime and big <laughs> example of doing more. Right. No, I mean, I mean, what else we can do? I mean, we don't have those resources that we can make buy, drown, and then they go for sur surveillance all the time. But I think uh, uh, right. uh, you know, the, the uh, resources, uh, kind of uh, heavy amount of resources which India is putting on all these security measures at the, uh, you know, about India-Pakistan border and all, whatever the forces, all the expenses which they are doing in Kashmir, they should think more sensibly and uh, satisfy their own people and they should utilize this amount of money for the poverty alleviation mm -hmm. in their own country. I mean, uh, Instead of, you know, of course, spending it yeah, needlessly. Uh, I mean, look at the uh, health indicators and the education indicators and the income level indicators. I mean, these are all poor. Uh, I mean, India is a big democracy, big country, 10 times bigger than that. But, uh, you know, it is lagging behind on so many other indicators. So they should focus more on human development and they should encourage, you know, uh, for this area, Sark region. I mean, why don't they come forward and make a Sark food bank, for example? You know, uh, and uh, so many other things they can join together. They, they should join hands with us on 
climate change adaptation. They share, they, they must share us uh, their data on climate and water with us so that we can plan our, uh, you know, uh, system properly. Right. But uh, I mean, it is a absolutely, uh, you know, uh, irresponsible, I would say, childish policy, which, uh, you know, uh, particularly this go Indian government is pursuing. And they are, they are being criticized by their own people. I mean, uh, and, but why, and, and you know, again and again, if they continue to blame, blame us, if they do have the evidence, we've repeatedly asked, why don't they share it with us? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, you, you know, blame game has become part of their foreign policy towards Pakistan, I tell you. And to some extent, previously, Sri Lanka, to some extent, Bangladesh, but largely Pakistan. Number two, Imran Khan mentioned, that if you have grievances, if you have proof, share with us. Right, exactly. The major proof is this culpation which we are sharing with them. We have, yeah, and yes, And whole of course. international media and they are, uh, at least they are showing, people are watching what's going on. But when they are told that you share with us, they have nothing to They surely fail to do so. Right, exactly. And, and I, on, yeah, on Kalbushan Singh issue, for example, I would say, I mean, this is a really very uh, uh, premature or, uh, you know, very uh, uh, sort of a low level of thinking. Instead of agreeing with Pakistan, they have gone to International Court of Justice. Right. And every day, every, you know, for the last two years, this issue is being discussed in the international matters and everybody is, uh, you know, disgracing India on this particular subject. So, right. so, so we have, you know, the Shimla Agreement uh, with India. They have discarded the Shimla Agreement. Okay. And the Shimla Agreement, again, very clearly says that all disputed contentious issues between the two yeah. countries right. have to be solved under the United Nations Charter. They've actually discarded their own agreement uh, in that. And in Shim Shimla agreement, one thing more, General Saab, uh, very much right. And it was mentioned in Shimla, uh, deput and, uh, in Shimla agreement, agreement that without involving third party, international mediation, international interference, whatever, we have to sit together right, but and mutually agree. But Pakistan now telling them, let's sit. There's no question you of that. Know, They're just not willing to do that. You know, it's sad. Doesn't right. matter whoever is killed. Human killing is very right. sad. But what happened, what happened, this has happened many times across the border in our country. And we didn't go, again I repeat, we didn't go that revengeful. They have done it now. So they can sit. Pakistan offered them, you share with us and you can sit. But again, India, you know, they say, tail, I win, and had you lose. Right. So Kashmir that policy now, going can, can on. I, you have time? Right. And right. Just barely, okay. yes. So Kashmir is now today the most militarized region in the world. Yeah, yeah. With uh, one Indian soldier imposed on 20 Kashmiris. And the cost of, let's say, retaining one million soldiers for the last 70 years I think they need to actually calculate that. Right. Is, it, is it really uh, worth keeping? And for economic reasons alone. They need to reevaluate yeah. themselves. Is it worth it for them? Right, right. right. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's all the time that we have. Thank you so much for joining us, Lieutenant General Raza Muhammad Khan. Thank you for being with us. Chaudhry Inayatullah, thank you for joining us today. Dr. Mansoor Akbar Kundi, thank you for being with us today. India remains uh, as blatant as far as their conspiracies against Pakistan is concerned, as far as their involvement in terrorism in, against Pakistan is concerned. But as far as Pakistan is concerned, we're very clear if they do have the proof, then they should share it with us. If they do have actionable intelligence, share it with us. Otherwise, Pakistan will retaliate and ha can retaliate. It has the full capacity to do so. Thank you so much for joining us today on Perspective.